Hello everyone, and welcome to this Splatoon deep dive video. So, as of just a couple hours ago, they announced Splatoon 3, which I honestly wasn't expecting. I was expecting uh, maybe a Salmonhead expansion, like the Octo expansion, but no, it's just a whole entire new game. So, there is so much to unpack here, first of all, and so many theories to go through, so let's dive right on in, I guess. Um... So the first thing we have here is the opening sequence showing a craggy landscape, which as it pans over is shown to be France, or at least what used to be France, specifically Paris. In this, we also see there are a whole mess of new hairstyles, which have been renamed to style. Also in this, we do see that the Octolings are once again playable in this. I'm not sure if you'll have to buy like a DLC thing for them, but it would appear that they probably will be available from launch as well, which is very interesting. We also get a look at the new eye color options, which the eye color options actually have multicolored aspects to them, which look fantastic, as well as, I think, bring it towards an interesting point of, will we have potentially multicolored teams? Like, you have the teal orange team versus the yellow blue team. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if that would really work, but it could be pretty interesting. And we also get to see a new glance at the customizable Salmonid Buddies, which will come in a lot later with the theories part. Going on, there's also a bit of a train sequence that is shown up, possibly having to do with the Deep Sea Metro, but if it's actually taking p place in Paris, France, the distance from Ingopolis, which is roughly around Tokyo in Japan, is quite large, so there might not be a whole lot of correlation there. But just an observation. But going into the Salmonid thing, I've had a theory for a little bit now, and some other people have agreed with me on the internet, that um, I believe the big bad is going to be Mr. Grizz. Especially seeing as how there is a Salmonid buddy in this game, so clearly the player character is taking the side of the Salmonids in all of this, and as of Splatoon 2, we have only seen Mr. Grease communicating through a bear-shaped radio, so we've not actually ever seen the real Mr. Grizz, possibly because he is actually over in this new area, um, which is not, which allegedly is not a part of Inkopolis, and he's been collecting golden eggs from the Salmon Run game mode that we all play, um, which allegedly could, are very powerful as they are rumored, uh, like, they are talked about to be part of the construction of the Grisco weapons, which are far more powerful than most other weapons in the game. Going on to the Salmonid side, however, they have been known to covet and learn from Octarian and human technology, having a trade deal with them, and then also various examples in the ruins of Arc Polaris showing them reverse engineering the spaceship and shuttlecraft there. There's also a number of sunken scrolls alluding to the Salmonid's province in Splatoon 3, which was then confirmed by your Salmonid buddy being there, so if there's one there likely is more, and in Chaos vs. Order, the stage that was released with that, MC Princess Diaries, uh, and in the background of that stage you can see the Nihilus statue, which has been roped off, likely to be researched and protected. However, unlike Inglings or Octarians, the Salmonids can swim underwater, meaning that they could possibly penetrate this floating barrier and steal some of its advanced technology. Moving on to the actual, um, what appears to be the lobby area of this game, one thing I noted in this is that it, it has an oddly muted color scheme compared to the vibrance of Inkopolis Plaza and Square. This could possibly have something to do with Chaos winning the final fest of Splatoon 2, but there's not exactly a whole lot to go off of, seeing as how different the landscape and area is from Inkopolis. We also don't know how far away this the events of this game are. In the events of Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, two years roughly pass, in which a lot of changes, including Callie being abducted, Squid Sisters falling out of popularity, and the rise of, of prominence of Off the Hook. Speaking of which, we also have the events regarding those in Chaos vs. Order and Mushroom vs. Star. In both, Pearl was the victor, 
prompting Marina to discuss with Pearl at the end of Mushroom vs. Star the possibility of what would happen if she were to lose her musical touch. Based off of this, I think it would be possible that Marina will be your mentor-like figure, such as like how Marie was or Cuttlefish was in the Splatoon 3 story mode. If so, this brings up the question of where is Pearl in, in this? Is she still in Inkopolis pursuing a musical career, or is she out with Marina in this other area? Also along with this, um, brings up the Octotune bonus track, in which we not only get our first English to uh, Inkling translation, <laughs> but we also hear Pearl and Marina g receiving the same message from R Cuttlefish repeated over and over again. <laughs> Given Cuttlefish's close proximity to Commander Tartar and the partially sanitized Agent 3, it is possible that Cuttlefish could be going through the sanitization process and the message was sent as a possible cry for help. Needless to say, there's a high likelihood that off the hooking Cuttlefish will probably play an important role in the story of Splatoon 3. In regards to the overall story, there's several areas in both Octo Expansion and Salmon Run where posters and flyers are, are put up to suggest that humanity was not solely killed off by global warming. Other than those, there's little known about this unknown factor. Um, however, I believe that based on the fact that uh, Lil Judd is probably a clone of Judd, as Judd is the only remaining cat on the planet, bar Little Judd, and the uh, dialogue given by Commander Tartar saying that he is trying to create the perfect being with the sanitization process, there is a possibility that this might have to do with some sort of genetic modification or bioweapon, both of which could also possibly explain why the Eiffel Tower does not appear to have simply been washed over by the tides from the global warming events that flooded the planet, but appears to have been like physically damaged in some way, causing it to flip over and causing there to be like blasted apart bits at the top where the base of the tower once would have been. From a gameplay standpoint, several game-changing alterations can already be seen. Um, a lot of these I'm really excited about. Uh, for reference, one of them is the respawn pad has been replaced with these floating pads, fairly similar to the ones used by the mothership in Salmon Run. These pads essentially allow you to choose where you spawn at, um, something that we have not seen in any of the other games. Um, also, uh, in this clip, we also see, as Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2 did, the weapons of Splatoon 2 are carrying over into Splatoon 3, which is a good thing because that means you probably won't have to relearn entire new weapons, there will probably just be some minor alterations made similarly to how there was the transition from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2. In, these, uh, in this next series of clips, we also see the bow in action, which appears to have some sort of triple shot capability, which looks like it would be very fun to play, I'm very interested in this. A new type of blaster, either a redesign of the regular blaster, or some other new one. To me, it almost looks a little bit like a motorcycle engine, but that's just me personally. Um, we also see a strange crab-like drone, which could, to me, looks almost like it could be possibly the replacement for the Autobomb and Seeker as a kind of a buff to it. Maybe it climbs up walls now, something like that. We don't really know what this thing is. It could even be a special. We're not sure. But the biggest reveal of it is in the next scene right here, we see the return of the Ink Zuka. This is really huge because it means that the kits of Splatoon 3 could contain a, a mix of specials from Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, as well as some new unseen ones, which I'm really excited about because Potentially the killer whale could be back, as in my opinion it's much more balanced than the stingray, but then we would still have ones like the Booyah Bomb as the replacement for the Ink Strike, as it would still work on the Switch's control, so we have like a mixing of the weapon types. And potentially even like two that are like very similar being still in, like we might actually see Stingray and the killer whale both present as well as maybe some other third ones. Maybe the crab thing is a special, we don't know. But um, throughout all of this, we also, as an added bonus, get to hear the return of the drum beat that is present at the beginning of Splatoon 1 in the loading sequence, as well as a new remix of Splatac, which sounds phenomenal 
and it brings a really cool flair to the new game that I'm really excited for. Other than that, as of now, there isn't a much else that we could we really know about this, but I'll continue to put out my thoughts and theories on it as we get new information. On another note, it'll be quite some time before the game is released, which hopefully means that it'll have a little bit more time to cook and that it won't be rushed and it will be a fully completed project, which I'm super excited about. And I hope you guys did enjoy this. I'm super excited. I hope you guys are. And I will see you all in the next one. See ya.